What's up guys, welcome back to Stoffer Garage. Today's detail is not only a disaster interior detail, but it is also a subscriber's car. Caitlin, who is the owner of this and her husband, she reached out to me and showed me pictures of it and I could not resist detailing this one because the car has never been clean on the inside. And a little bit of backstory behind the car, her husband got the car from a friend who was a restaurant owner and it has food and grime and all that stuff from a restaurant inside of it. But then he is also a mechanic, which means that it is full of grease as well from cars and dirt and everything else. So we're gonna be doing a ton of extraction today. We got our work cut out for us. Oh, and before we move on, make sure you guys stick around to the very end because we're gonna get the owner's reaction of the final product. Always makes it worthwhile. So if you guys are new, hit the subscribe button down below. And if you are subscribed, make sure the notification bell is turned on. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so as we get started, guys, the one thing that you're gonna notice is the owners of the car actually picked up their stuff out of the car and only left a few things, which made my life a lot easier to begin with and immediately allows me to jump right into the vacuuming. Now for the vacuuming process, I definitely started with the seats, getting a lot of the debris off the seats where the different seams start, but then also vacuuming all of the seat cushions themselves. And you do that because it helps when you're doing the extraction process to get some of the dirt out of the fibers before you get to that point. One thing I do like to do is when I vacuum the carpets is try to get as much out as possible because you run the risk of clogging up your extractor. It's just excess dirt that's larger than what you wanna actually get out of the extraction process. It's just, it's one of those things that I try to do as much as I can in the forefront so that way I can focus on more of the embedded stuff that gets stuck in carpets. I'm sure you guys noticed in the before shots that the shifter console, the cup holders, and the e-brake was probably the dirtiest part in my opinion. And because of that, I wanted to try to vacuum as much of it up as possible so that way my actual detailing brushes aren't getting completely caked with goo and gunk and debris. When it comes to vacuuming, I have several different attachments with this new vacuum. It's just the basic hose, it's this claw type tool, and then you have the tiny nozzle crevice tool. And they all have different uses that you'll kind of figure out as you vacuum your own car. But for me personally, not using any attachments, good for getting a lot of the larger debris up very quickly. The claw is good for kind of when you're doing that second pass to get a lot of the carpet fibers clean faster. And the crevice tool is obviously more for a crevice. And if you're trying to get in between the seams on the seats or hard to reach spots, if you're not pulling out your seats when you're just doing a typical vacuuming, that's where those tools kind of come in handy. Speaking of tools, if you have dog hair or a lot of embedded fibers or hair from anything whatsoever, a Lily brush is actually a really awesome tool to pick up. You can use it on the inside of your car. You can use it in your house if you have dogs and cats. It's just a really, really good tool at getting those fibers and those hairs pulled out of them because it's got that rubber edging on them. So if you guys are interested in checking any of the products out in general that I use in my videos, I have them all linked in the description box below. Now that all the carpet is done being vacuumed up, I'm moving to the rear seat bench, vacuuming in all of the seats themselves, getting behind the seats to the trunk, and then vacuuming on that rear deck lid. That is probably an area that a lot of people miss as well. Vacuuming that rear deck lid is kind of like wiping down your dashboard in the front. It's just the opposite, if you will. So wiping that down, vacuuming any of the dirt and debris up, it gets dusty back there, especially if you're driving around with your windows down in the summer or in a warmer climate. You get a lot of crap back there, so go ahead and vacuum it at this point. For the rear seats, we're gonna be pulling those out as well because there is a good amount of staining on that bottom bench. 
pulling it out just makes it easier for anybody to access them and they're really easy compared to the front seats. I think the rear bench is typically a lot easier to pull out in any sedan. And this is also a treasure trove of fun stuff because everything kind of falls behind this area. You'll actually be surprised what you'll find underneath this, especially if you have kids. Now that all the seats are out of the vehicle, this is the point where I kind of just do my last pass of vacuuming before we move on to extracting the actual seats themselves. And I try to do the seats first before I do the carpets inside the car is because they take the longest to dry typically. And even if they don't take longer, you never want to give it back to the customer with wet seats. I mean, that's just like common sense and it makes it kind of hard for them to drive at home without getting soaked. So I always try to do the seats first. Now for the front seats, I'm starting with cleaning the rails and I'm just using my all-purpose cleaner and my bristled brush and I'm even using my drill brush on the plastic for some of those harder gunked on spots. And the reason why is if you get this area clean when you're using your extractor or drill brush on the actual cloth seat itself, you're not bringing some of that dirt and debris over into it and causing additional staining. One thing not to forget is when you're doing this, put the rails forward and back. I actually didn't show it on camera here, but if you put the rails forward and back, you'll find a lot of dirt in those rails that you wouldn't typically be able to get to. And if you guys are looking to pick up a set of detailing brushes as well, head on over to foxclean.com. That's my own personal brand. And it, you guys purchasing these detailing brushes helps support this channel, helps make these videos possible. And make sure you guys tag me on Instagram. That way I can share your posts of you guys using the brushes as well. And thank you to everyone that's already purchased sets of brushes. It does definitely help support this channel. So inside my sprayer, I'm just using 10 to 1 ratio, an off-the-shelf carpet cleaning solution that's low foam from Home Depot. It's just typically generic. There are more specialty ones. I do have a Chemical Guys one that I like as well that has a little bit more of an odor to it that helps kind of make everything smell better once everything dries. In general, you can use LA's Totally Awesome. You can use an all-purpose cleaner for doing this sort of thing. You're essentially looking for some sort of solution that helps get the grease and everything and the dirt and all those different substances in your carpet fibers or your floor mats or your seats lifted to the surface so that way your extractor can do the work. And now that the seats are saturated, it's time to bust out the drill brush. And I've been kind of experimenting with different types of drill brushes and they have these crinkled ones that are more of a medium and then the soft ones with their straight fibers 
covers and I've kind of come to a balance that the medium ones are sometimes a little too stiff and it causes the drill to jump around too much. And I haven't seen those perform better than a soft one. So the soft one is what I typically recommend. It does a much better job of being gentle when you're trying to do door panels or if you're doing the seats on a cloth seat or even leather seats in general. It's just the best all around solution I feel. And I'm gonna be carrying those Ud Fox Clean very, very shortly as well. So kind of be on the lookout for those new products that I'll be carrying. Now in my extractor, I'm just using plain old hot water. There's no special solution in there. It's just purely for a rinse and sucking up all of the solution that we've already sprayed into the seats themselves to get that dirt and debris and grease and any oils out of the surface and into the extractor tank. These vertical seat shots are honestly like the best thing in the world for any detailer and I'm sure for you guys that like watching these for satisfaction is just seeing the extraction lines where you see half of it's completely clean and the other half is still dirty and just that's what you want to see as a detailer and it's what makes my heart happy. In every one of my videos, whenever I do extraction, I do the dumping process, I usually get a lot of comments on what kind of drink it is. So I'm gonna need you guys to go in the comments below and comment what do you think it is. Does it look like a coffee, a Coca-Cola, a chocolate milk? There's, or you know, with when it came to the, the goat motel, that one just looked like fruit punch. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments below what you guys think this is. Personally, I'm gonna go with a cold brew coffee.
And in my videos, I use the Sandia extractor and in general, I only pick this extractor up over my Bazell little green machine thing that I used to use because of the amount of extraction that I'm doing and the volume of it. When you're using the tiny ones, it just takes forever compared to these larger units to get all of the carpets, all of the seats clean for some of these details. So that is the main reason why I picked this one up. And in general, if you guys are looking to get an extractor for kind of spot cleaning your seats, something you can use in the house, the little green machine or anything that you can pick up at Walmart or Target or anything, those do a fantastic job. It's more of the prep when you're doing the extraction before it that makes the difference. So the right solution, using a drill brush, letting it sit and soak into the fibers, that sort of thing is what matters the most. And it, even a shop vac can get the extraction portion done. It really doesn't matter. As long as it's a wet dry vac or you have a mean green machine or whatever extractor, it all does a great job. So that's something to keep in mind if you're looking at picking one up for yourself. Now for the door panels themselves, I'm just using my all-purpose cleaner, I'm using my bristle brushes and my drill brush in certain aspects, and then I'm using Folex for the actual cloth insert that's on the door panels itself to get the panel completely clean. Because there is a lot of grease in this car on every panel and on the carpets, multiple passes has typically been the trend across this entire detail. And the main reason is, is when I spray my solution on and I use my brush to try to foam up and agitate and get that stuff loosened up, is it's so greasy, it doesn't want to like foam up and come off the surface. So I do a light first pass, wipe it clean, and by that second pass, everything's kind of coming off the surface and allowing it to be cleaned. One thing I recommend is kind of start with the top of the car and in certain aspects by vacuuming I didn't really do that but in general try to start from the top and work your way down and because I pulled out the seats like I mentioned I'm trying to get those dried first before I get to the rest of the stuff and just get them out of the way but starting with the door panels cleaning the windshield doing the dashboard doing the center console and getting all of that cleaned up is the right method to do it so that way you're not introducing additional dirt you know after you've done the extraction on the carpets Moving all that dirt around is always gonna cause it to contaminate the lower parts. So just start at the top, work your way down, and then when you get to the carpets, it's kind of like the last thing that you do. One thing I did wanna mention is if you guys do not have notifications turned on, go ahead and hit that bell down below and make sure you turn it on all notifications so that way whenever there's a new community tab post, there's a new video uploaded, you guys are the first ones to know.
For the center armrest, I used the Folex solution, which does a really good job as just a spray on carpet cleaner. And after doing about, I think it ended up being four or five passes, but after the fifth pass, I was actually really baffled that I was able to get it all entirely out. Um, but it just kind of proves that the right process and the right chemical solution really can make a difference. All the gunk on the shifter and the cup holders and the e-brake was actually honestly surprising how easily it came off the surface. Definitely allowing the solution to soak helped a ton and then just using my bristle brush to move it off the surface and get it out of those different corners and cracks and crevices and then just wiping it clean with my microfiber towel. Now for the juicy part, which is the floors. And to be honest, I'm gonna say that just looking at the floors during the vacuuming process, I was a little bit pessimistic on the entire cleaning process when it came to the carpet because not only were we talking about a lot of grease and dirt that was embedded in the fibers themselves, especially on the driver's side, but because the car is a little bit older, the entire fibers had been worn off to a point where it was almost just like a hard plastic surface that's the bottom of the entire carpet. So I did as much extraction. I did two passes on the front driver well, and then I went around and did one pass on the rest of the carpets. It just didn't make sense to continue to work on it because it was kind of diminishing returns at that point. And that's something to keep in mind when you're also cleaning your car. If your carpets are old and there's holes and it's really, really caked in there, the best solution is honestly pick up some nice floor mats. You could always put that on top of them. But the better solution is to go to like Rock Auto or find somewhere online that's selling on a replacement carpet. And you can usually pick them up for less than 150 bucks for the entire floor carpet of your car. And there's videos online that you can find on how to do it. But typically in general, it's not that hard to do. And if you replace that carpet, it usually makes a huge difference on the appearance of the inside of your vehicle and making it look you know, a little bit new again.
Now that the extraction is done, I'm kind of going back around the panels after the drill brush has kind of kicked up some of the dirt and debris from the floors, wiping down all the door sills, cleaning those up, cleaning the rest of the door panels and the center consoles on the side before I do my final vacuuming process. And I do the final vacuuming because no matter what, you're always going to introduce just a little bit of dirt or debris throughout the entire extraction process. So just going one more time over the carpets before you put the seats back in ensures that when the customer gets the car back, it really is clean. It just doesn't have anything remaining on the floors. And the final step is get all the seats and everything back in the car and make sure you torque them down based on the specs that you find online or in your service manual to ensure that everything's tightened properly. And the car turned out incredible. I actually was really, really happy with how a lot of the pieces turned out. Honestly, initially based on being all oil and gasoline and just car goo, I was a bit pessimistic, like I said, that some of this stuff wasn't gonna come out, but it definitely transformed the vehicle and the owner was super, super happy with the end results. So if you stick around to the very end, I have the owner's reaction, which is a subscriber. And if you guys have vehicles that are located in the Columbus, Ohio or Central Ohio area, and it's a disaster, or if you wanna get your car clean, go ahead and shoot me an email at thestoffergarage at gmail.com. Send me some pictures of the car and I'm happy to see if we can get you featured on Stoffer Garage. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Tell just from the oh, the seats are actually gray. <laughs> They're yes. not brown anymore. Yes, they are. Oh, this is wonderful. They actually feel like fabric again. <laughs> and I got the armrest completely clean. Yes. So that it's is, not black at all. Oh my god. That is yeah. actually kind of incredible. This is great. Oh my god. Yeah, look, that's not black either. Yeah. <laughs> it just has all the marks from my keys. Thank so you. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I was going to go. say, fix your muffler and I'll let you drive. Oh wow, <laughs> there you go, there you go. Thank, well, thank you, you guys much. for letting me, you. you're welcome, thank you.